Hi, I'm Kevin Rahm, and I'm chatting with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Okay, so everybody, I have the absolute honor and pleasure of the company of Kevin Rahm today. Kevin, how are you? I'm great. How are you doing, Chris? I'm good, thank you. And I'm very jealous because we've just been talking about how it's winter for you and you're in shorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's shorts with like a light sweater. It's that weather. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's still rubbing it in, like I said. I was in <laughs> <laughs> almost a 90 degree angle with the wind coming out of work earlier. Yes. Nice. Yeah. Nice. I don't miss that. No, drizzly and rain. Although you have had rain for two weeks, haven't you? We've had a lot, tons and tons of rain, which we desperately needed, which was good to get. Mm-hmm. Um, but for Southern California, and I'm, I live in Northern California right now, I live right. in Southern California, but um, I'm like, okay, that's enough. We should <laughs> spread this out more. We don't need this every day. You know, like if you don't see the sun in a week, it's like something's wrong. You know? <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. It'd be my colleagues. I've got two, I say where I work, I've got two colleagues, and they, uh, one of them's just spent two weeks in California at the California offices, so I'm blaming him. Because the entire time he, he was over there, it was raining. He, he, oh, that poor guy. He comes all the way <laughs> over know. here. He just He gets British weather. Yeah, yeah. It just didn't stop, apparently. It was horrendous the entire time he was there. So we've had a good chuckle about that. <laughs> I went I went to uh, I play, I went to Scotland a couple of years ago and played some golf out there. And I remember we were at the old course, and mm-hmm. it was 50-something degrees. And we were bundled. You know, we were, like, layered. And, yep. like, it wasn't raining, but and it got sunny. It mm-hmm. got to like 55 and we were still bundled up with like multiple layers and sweaters and there were people sunbathing. Oh yeah. And I was, what is wrong? They're like, it's the sun. They it, The sun comes out and they bathe. Like yep. it doesn't matter how cold it is. This is warm. This is warm. I was oh, like, yeah. wow. Especially in Scotland as well. They'll have their little kilts out topless and be yep. like. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what they were wearing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. I think it gets to about 50, yeah, the mid fifties here. And you know, that for us is, it's not summer's day, but it's, it's warm enough to do what you're it's doing nice. now. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, cool. Anyway, as you know, I've got questions for you. Um, since I, you were kind enough to in, accept the invite, um, I've had an outpouring of love for your character and for yourself um, cool. from all the fans and sending loads and loads of questions. Well, not loads. Well, there were loads and loads of questions. I filtered it through. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. So otherwise we would be here all day. <laughs> and yeah, so it's just to find out some more about yourself and obviously about your character and how you feel about being on the, on the show with your, with your colleagues and everything like that. So to, cool. to kick it off, we shall find out a bit more about yourself. Is What made you decide to become an actor in the first place? Oh, um, I remember I, <clears throat> I, I wanted to be an actor. I don't, I didn't, it wasn't like I, as a kid, said I want to be an actor. I think I was kind of always doing it, mm-hmm. un- unbeknownst to myself, um, uh, which is a more serious conversation. But I, uh, when, it, when it started to dawn on me that I could do it, uh, I, when I'm, I switched high schools in the middle of high school mm-hmm. and I was really big in debate in the first high school, oh, okay. and I moved to the second high school. Their debate program was really small, but they had a huge theater program. Mm-hmm. So I kind of got thrown into this theater class because I had a debate class before and they didn't have that. So they just kind of put me in this theater class <laughs> and I had done a couple, we did like one play a year at the first school I went to and I did them, but I, I was like, I don't, you know, I did it to meet the girls from the sister school. Um, <laughs> And because my uh, in the, our freshman year, we had a big brother signed to you as a senior mm-hmm. for a freshman. And um, my big brother told me that I was going to audition for the play. And right. I said, no. And he goes, no, you are. And he was much larger than me. And so I did. <laughs> um, but then, you know, it was, it was fun, but I didn't take it seriously at all. And, and I even even in the other school, the second school in Atlanta, Texas, uh, I did not. I was I did it. I was it was well received, but it wasn't like I didn't think of it as a career choice. Mm-hmm. And when I got to college, my intent was to go to law school. And I saw this play at the school and it was, I was like, Oh, that's, that's how you're supposed to do it. That's I, now I see. And I thought I should try that while I'm here. I'll regret it if I don't try it. And worst case scenario, if I take an acting class, it can only help me be a better Mm -hmm. lawyer. And then I quickly realized that I I wanted to play a lawyer. I didn't want to be a lawyer. Right. (laughs) Um, (laughs) <laughs> Excuse me, because I met a couple of people who were actually in law school and they mm-hmm. were reading uh, tons and tons and tons of things they didn't care about at all. <laughs> and uh, I didn't like to read at all, even yeah. things I liked at that point. Um, uh, so I quickly switched to the theater program and I never looked back. Fantastic. That's a great way. Just imagine you could have been a, 
You could have been raking definitely... it in as a lawyer by now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was actually, I think when I turned like 35, I, because in my, the back of my head, when I first moved to LA, I always thought, well, I always gave myself the out. Well, I'll give myself so many years and mm. then if it doesn't work out. I'll go back and finish school and go to law school and I'll do that. You know? Yeah. And I think it was when I turned 35, I realized I, it was too late. Like I was <laughs> too old at that point mm-hmm. to, by the time I finished law school, I'd be, you know, way too old to start a career. And I was like, okay, the, now I, it's, this is it. I better keep doing this. Yeah. I better keep working because this the I have no other marketable skills. <laughs> I'm sure that's not true. You should pick something up along. <laughs> <laughs> I can act like multiple professions. Yeah, but I don't know that I can actually do them. <laughs> hey, I've got away with it for 15 years doing that. <laughs> right? Yeah. No, I hope none of my colleagues are listening. <laughs> <laughs> hey, your friends don't watch this. Yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> my wife doesn't. She she doesn't like my voice so. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds too tinny for her, I think. <laughs> but yeah, no, no, that's cr- I mean, it's, it's kind of opposite. Uh, yeah, very similar. I mean, I started out acting myself when I was 18, and I loved it. I was, it was only the same sort of, you know, high school stuff and things. I was in a musical. I played Drake the Butler in Annie. Nice. Um, yeah, that was, a, that was a nice role. Coming on and just singing my, you know, the upper class. It's a, I did this FBI. You know, he says it's the FBI. Yeah. At the time, it was, I mean, I'm 40, so it was, how old was I? I was 16. The X-Files were just the big thing. Wow. And uh, so I was like, I, I've, you know, I was a Mulder wannabe. <laughs> I was just, I think I just watched the scene. So I just came on one night and I was like, uh, Daddy Warburg, sir, it, it's the FBI. And apparently <laughs> I just did it because I was copying Mulder. But everyone was like, the, the disdain that you had in your voice <laughs> saying FBI was absolutely spot on. And I was like, thanks. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I just copied uh, yeah, David Duchovny. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Always copy from the best. Oh, God, yeah. But yeah, no, so I kind of loved it. and went out and did German and IT, but I'm trying to get back into it myself. I, I did a little indie film last year. Um, yeah? Uh, well, a little roll of one, 25 lines, so it's not that little. It was quite good. It's not that little. No. Um, I'll, I'll tell you off air what, what the character was, because this is probably good. You know, a question that I would have asked of you is what advice would you give to an, an aspiring actor? And it would be, read the script would be one because I didn't have the full script I was given my lines and on the day I found out my character was not the kind of character that I would ever really want to be so I'll tell you off a line <laughs> okay uh, all right yeah so yeah yeah I, I always get the full script always yeah yeah that's a good idea <laughs> they also gave me extra lines on the day as well which I wasn't aware of and yeah it, it was it was good though. Wait, now do you think there was, there was this uh, deliberate withholding to get you to do it i think so <laughs> okay. yeah right. i definitely think so. involved a cloak and obviously muffled for voiceovers so wow. i'm sure you can imagine what kind of a <laughs> yep yep got it dark deed that was um so yeah no that's say but yes yeah, it's, it's a great story to have and, and you know to find out someone's gone from being or wanting to be a lawyer originally into acting it's quite a nice turn yeah. that's quite a huge turn actually it's well, and, and for me, it was it was it wasn't that I desperately wanted to be a lawyer. It was that where where I grew up, um, you know, we were barely middle class, mm-hmm. if not, you know, below. And um, the the only way, as a young man, where I grew up, either you did manual labor or you took over a family business or you became a lawyer or a doctor. Like, oh, and okay. I <laughs> and I we didn't have a family business, and I I was I'm, I didn't want to do manual labor. Yeah, and uh. Um, and I didn't want to do medicine. And so I was good at debate. I was good at using my mind that way. So I thought, okay, well, that's my opportunity Mm -hmm. to move up, you know? And so that's what, it wasn't that I wanted to be a lawyer. It was that, that, that was my way of having a good job. And I thought I could get away with that. Fair when, I re- when I realized people would pay me to do this, I think that's even better. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? Exactly, exactly. must be. You know, it's a, it's a fantastic career to have. It's a very volatile career, but it's a, it's a great career to have. So. It's, great. it's great when you're working. Yeah, yeah definitely. And, uh, I think that's what a lot of people don't understand. That from the amount of actors I've spoken to through here, it's, I think... Ninety percent of actors are unemployed, and it's it's oh, and, and, and I think, at any yeah, one I think time. Number of the members of the Screen Actors Guild, and that's yeah. the people who who have gotten a job before. Mm. Not to mention all the people that want to get in the Screen Actors Guild. Exactly, and I think the numbers probably higher. Yeah, it's a, it's a it's a cutthroat business. Um, it's just and it's and it's hard because there's only so much you can control. Mm-hmm. You know, I I can only go in to so there's only so many parts available to me and then I can only go into so many rooms and I can only try to get so many jobs and yeah um, you know I've been very lucky that way so. <laughs> touch wood 
Yeah. Excellent. Speaking of that, kind of what again, your inspirations did you have, obviously, while you're going through and, and studying to be a lawyer? There must have been some people on screen that. Have... Um, er, you know, it's funny. I, I'm trying to think early on. Uh, my In college, you know, my, my, my intention to be a lawyer didn't last very long in college. It was yeah. less than a couple of semesters. So it wasn't <laughs> like I got deep into that track. Yeah. Uh, but I remember when I first started studying theater at college, Kenneth Branagh was a big, I mean, a Henry five had just come out mm -hmm. and, um, and that was a big influence. And, you know, I think he it was not long. I can't remember the time frame, but it, you know, it was within that five year period that he wrote his first biography yeah. which when he was less than 30 or he was 20, <laughs> 20 something. Um, Ridiculously a, little, <laughs> a little ridiculous, but, uh, but I, I wanted, that's, that's who I wanted to emulate for a time. Mm hmm. Um, and then, uh, it quickly turned, uh, to like people like Jeff Bridges and, and, uh, pe people that had a humanity to their roles. Like if I could emulate one career, it'd be Jeff Bridges, like yeah. someone, who, someone who's done a myriad of types of roles mm -hmm. and each of them is specific and, um, and, and memorable. And I feel like he steals every movie he's in, not in a bad way. Yeah, like he's so specific and so human, um, and that became like the the beacon. For me. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. It's a good good choice to have. <laughs> right? I think you know it's not a bad career to have. No, no, exactly. Yeah, you know, and say to put, make that sort of humanity and push that humanity and human feeling across on screen it is difficult yeah. because it's a you know for people like me it is it's a glass screen that you're watching. So to, right. you know and. I've got to say, from I mean, I'm a, I'm quite early on in Lethal Weapon at the moment. So, but from what I've seen, that that does come across the the character of Avery Brooks is you can I've already picked out the kind of characteristics from him and the empathy that he can put across, and that does come out on the screen as well. There's obviously Good, empathy and sarcasm, I think, as well. <laughs> you know, but, 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 well, yeah, there's a lot of sarcasm, <laughs> but it, you know that that you know anyone who's who's you can use sarcasm well has to have empathy, I believe. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, it's like they, they go hand in hand for me personally. Mm -hmm. But, uh, and, and that kind of role in the past is always usually just a curmudgeon -y old white guy. You know, it's <laughs> like, you know, just, you know, boring, angry, you know, established yeah. white guy. And so um, to add those layers to that character, I found interesting. And luckily, that's what they were looking for. Excellent, excellent. That's great. That is great. You're right about empathy and sarcasm as well. Because I, I, I do. I've got a bit of both. Um, sarcasm seems to be stronger for me. <laughs> that's that's what growing up on Monty Python, Black Adder does for you. <laughs> oh, two of my favorites. Oh two yeah. Of my <laughs> yeah, I don't think you can ever beat those. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, I've got them all listed. Maybe, all. maybe, maybe Faulty Towers. It's oh, a, it's up. Yeah, that's it's up that, there. That's but up that's, there as well. You know, did, I can't believe they only actually made 12 episodes of Faulty Towers. I know. Shocking, I know. isn't it? <laughs> it seems like there's so many more of them. I know. It's got, I think the amount of times they were repeated, but they never, ever got old. They just... <laughs> yeah. 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 Sadly, we lost Manuel, didn't we? Andrew Sachs last year. Yeah. In, in that horrendous 2016 year that it was. It was rough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, they, they, they're fantastic series and fantastic... Yeah timeless <laughs> i've got a 10 year old son and i'm desperately desperately trying to get him into monty python oh really the, the, yeah I've got, I've got the films and i know they're slightly out there with some of the but i think the holy grail he might be i think he'll oh. find that funny <laughs> right life of brian yeah <laughs> i thought in your general direction <laughs> <laughs> uh i used to do a uh, wicked yeah because a big nasty rabbit with pointy teeth <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> we should move on with the interview rather than <laughs> <laughs> i used to sit in the uni i was in the like, officer training court it's like i think you've got some otc at universities and you know where you train yeah. like i was in there and there's plenty of times we used to march over the mountains and there was like a group of five of us and we were just yeah. huge black adder fans and monty python fans and we could recite the scenes back to oh. back so all these night marches when we're doing like 20 mile marches in the pour and rain all you can oh. hear from you know is, is reciting black adder and singing monty python sit on my face or <laughs> echoing across the welsh valleys <laughs> i'm a lumberjack and i'm okay yep that's the, <laughs> that's the one i'd even did one i've got a photo somewhere we did we were ponchos you know the barbershop quarter yeah yeah we oh. have <laughs> we did a scene. Ah. It was in front of all the. It was in front of all the navy uh, reservists. So it was one of these sods operas where you know you just do skits, and we yeah. all, the four of us came on with just a poncho on the front, 
and we sang. Um, it was sit on my face at the time. It was sit on my face and tell me that. You know, tell me that you, you love, love me. me. <laughs> and as we turned, we all turned round, and the ponchos. That was all we had on. So it was just complete. F- <laughs> but, <laughs> but our senior officer, she snapped a picture and put it right up for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so I'm sure that's still around somewhere. Um, quite embarrassing. So, so 20, uh, 20 years younger than I am now, so it's not as bad. <laughs> right. You were doing a lot of marching at the time. So yeah, sure yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's my excuse. <laughs> yep. Cool. So moving on with questions anyway. Um, sorry to everyone okay. for that diversion. No worries. <laughs> it was me. Uh, what's, uh, yeah. If someone made a movie on your life and you could choose any actor in the world to play you, who would you pick and why? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. Um, Movie of my life. Uh, well, I would have to say me. I'd want to play myself. I think <laughs> right now. Um, I don't. There's no one that. There's no one that stands out. I, I mean, like Jeff Bridges always. Maybe like a younger Jeff Bridges, but um, I, I, he. I don't know. I have to think about that one. Let me think about that one and see if someone see if a name comes up to me. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think of young actors right now that are. Um, I tell you what, you know who have. I don't know where you are in Lethal. There's this kid. His name is Theo, mm-hmm. and he there. There's. Did you see the episode where the 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 kid was hiding that with the with the I can't remember the title of the episode, but it was the it was the casino heist episode. No, not there yet. Okay, I think I'm actually coming up about three or coming four. Coming up, there's an episode where they have a casino heist. Right. There's a young kid mm-hmm. in it, and that kid is so good. Yeah. And he was like, he he shows up great. When you see it, you'll see. But on stage. This kid is amazing. Mm. Like he was just so present and so uh, just such a good actor. Yeah. Like I think Theo. I think that's you know that's the only one I've worked with recently that I think oh that kid should play. And so I think he could do it. Cool. He, you know, he'd, he'd wait a couple of years before he, you know. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll do it. We'll, yeah. But he uh, that's the only one I could think of recently that I've worked with that it's like oh my gosh that kid's amazing. Cool. We could play younger Kevin Rom. Yeah, he'll play younger man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jeff Bridges will play older. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, Jeff Bridges. Yeah. Well, you've got a bit of, um, I was going to say before, you've got a bit of branner about you anyway. The look, right? Yeah, yeah. The, <laughs> the style and the face there. You, I could, when you mentioned <laughs> yeah. it, I was thinking, actually, yeah, you could probably pass as Kenneth Branner on the street. <laughs> right. Uh, he can play my dad. <laughs> yeah. He's, yeah it's okay. Him and James, James Spader can play my older brother. James Spader. Oh, James Spader. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I went through a phase, especially right after... Um, Stargate, mm. where I had I had the kind of half mullet with the glasses, right? And um, and uh, I had, I signed his autograph a couple of times. People were like <laughs> in L.A. were like calling out James, 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 and I'm yeah. like, someone James, answer this woman. <laughs> and um, and uh, she pointed to me, and I was like, mm. what are, What are you talking about? And she goes, Will you sign this? And I'm like, Who do you think I am? She goes, You're James Spader. And I'm like, I'm not James Spader. And she went, Ugh. And I went, Okay. And I signed his autograph. <laughs> <laughs> James Spader, here you go. Fair enough. Fair. And again, now you said it, you can, you, yeah, you've got the same sort of smile and the same eyes. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> little devious. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely. <clears throat> uh, yeah, oh, yeah, he's another one. Um, the, the the blacklist, I think, has really brought him out. Really. <laughs> so, That's so phenomenal. I, I, I watched that. Sh- he's so good. I just love watching him. Yeah, he's, I, probably... he's one of those actors that I just enjoy watching him. Yeah, I think my wife just turned around. She said she wants Red Reddington in her life. So I was like, thanks. Yep. <laughs> but then again, so shave, do I. Shave your head. Yeah. Shave your head. You're, you're yeah. this close. <laughs> Put a hat on. Yeah. <laughs> and his shades. Yeah, yeah, that'd be quite cool. <laughs> Excellent. So moving on to some questions that have been sent in from fans themselves as well now. Okay. So uh, a chap called Simon Barre Brisbois. He says, when you've worked on weekly series like... I mean, you've worked on Amy, Desperate Housewives, Bates Motel, Ethan, Lethal Weapon itself. How many days does it usually take for a TV show to film an episode? It takes, um, the norm is seven days, mm-hmm. seven working days. Um, uh, Lethal, we do eight. Okay. Uh, Mad Men, I believe, was uh, seven or eight. Uh, the, the norm is seven or eight the working days, so oh, usually cool. a week and a half to shoot one episode. Yeah. And uh, this depends. Like, there are weeks that I work seven days. There are weeks that I work two days of those eight. Yeah. Uh, by weeks, I mean episodes. Um, but, yeah, that's the norm. So a week and a half. Cool. That's not too bad. <laughs> no. So, yeah, well, if you're doing if you're doing something like Madam Secretary where they do 22 to 24 a year, you're right. looking at t- 10 months, you know, yeah. of work. And, you know, the crew is doing 12, 14 hours a day at times. Well, yeah, exactly. 
that gets, you know, and like right now on our show, Damon and Clayne are doing those hours. Every, yeah. You know, it's rare that they get time off, whereas I breeze in and I do my <laughs> scenes. And I'm like, and see yeah, you guys, have like, fun. Yeah, they were like, oh, come on. <laughs> like, let's do, I'm like, let's do 22. Yeah. <laughs> like, up. Yeah. Let's do take 120. Yeah. <laughs> yeah let's go. Yeah. No fresh. <laughs> excellent, excellent. I mean, that is, you know, has there only been an occasion where episodes have been taken a bit longer due to any sort of special effects, live special effects or anything like that? Well, it's it's eight shooting days. So, like, there is another week or two of work that the post-production does, yeah. special effects does, before the actual show is done. We're just on stages that long. Um, a pilot, you know, the first episode of every show usually mm-hmm. takes double the time. So we shot our pilot over almost three weeks. Yeah. Three and a half weeks. Um, and then uh, usually season finales and uh, mid-season finales and, like, they'll have a big, sh- you know, big one in mm-hmm. the middle. Sometimes they'll add a day or two. Right. And, um but uh, or if you know every once in a while bad weather, you know, huh. if someone you know, in California, God, God forbid, God forbid someone gets hurt, yeah. you know, you know, or or someone gets sick, they have insurance and they take an insurance day and yeah. they try to shoot. But they are, they're always trying to you know they'll try to change the schedule and shoot something else in place and you know switch the schedule because the schedule schedule is always changing on our show. Okay, cool, fair enough. So I had to laugh when you said the weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, the last couple of weeks. Well, I mean, that's that was true. Yeah, that's true. Two weeks, but still, you know, it's supposed to be Southern California and sunny, and they're shooting in the rain. You know. Yeah, I like... guess that's true. <laughs> you can't exactly portray sunny on the TV when it's yeah, you're just sitting yeah. there with your own rain max on. Because <laughs> we do. Uh, I mean, I think we're about half and half on location and on stages. All right. Okay. Uh, so you know, they have to go outside quite a bit. Yeah. It's tough. <laughs> Well, so. it is. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that because yeah, if you're inside on the stage and you are, you're, you know, it's a daytime scene, and obviously the, the effects are that it's a nice yeah. sunny day. Then you go right outside, and it's like, well, that changed quick. <laughs> yeah, and or and or it's night. You know, you've been yeah. in the stage all day. Yeah, and it's come out sunshine, pitch black. <laughs> fake sunshine on the stage, and you go out and it's pitch black. You're like, what happened to my, you know? Yeah, where's my day gone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear, I can imagine that's a, that can be quite confusing sometimes. Or, or tiring, because yeah, it will tire you out immediately, wouldn't it? Because as soon as you come out, it's like, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's the days when you get there before the sun goes up, and by the time you come off the stage, the sun's already down. <laughs> <You're> like, <"Wow." laughs> yeah, zero vibe today. Oh god, yeah, I'm kind of like that. I leave the house at seven in the morning, so in the winter it's dark when I leave, and I get home at yeah. seven thirty at night as well. And it's you know also dark. Yeah, an hour and a half drive in the dark, and an hour and a half drive home in the dark. And it is. It's like. Well, that just disappeared quick. <laughs> <laughs> Summer will be a bit longer. We might get an extra hour. I wouldn't say sunshine over here. It might be getting uh, daylight. But at least, at least light. Light, yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, you get light. Yeah, it'll be light. Yeah. Um, hopefully, the sun might poke its head. I think you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was a great summer last year. It was the best day we had. <laughs> 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 That's uh, the good old Welsh joke. <laughs> Excellent. Moving on. Jamie, who is at Lady of Mischief on Twitter, will we get to see flashbacks of Avery and Myrtle when they were partners? I love. I, I don't. Not not in season one um, because I I just read eighteen, mm-hmm. uh, which is our last episode for the season, and yeah. that it doesn't happen in season one. But someone, and I, she might have been, it might have been her, that, but someone on Twitter had pitched that, and then I, we made jokes about it in, with the writers. Yeah. And I would love to go back and see, like, young Avery and, mm-hmm. like, Murtaugh with the with mustache, yeah. just the mustache, <laughs> or with hair, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> like, um, uh, I would love to see that. that. That hasn't been planned yet, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm in favor of that. I think that's a great idea. Oh, yeah, it would be, because, I mean, you've started, you know, as I say, I'm on, what, four and eight now, but the start off, you immediately starting off with that relationship between the two of you that you've had, you were partners, you've had that that, that past experiences together, so, right. yeah, that would be pretty good, because, you know, that really would be a good like thing the, to I see. I feel like the, the, so writers have, the writers have layered that pretty well through this season, mm. um, and the, the deeper you get in the season, the more of those moments that uh, Murtaugh and I have, uh, Damon and I share, that it, that are... It's really nice seeing when Avery is the boss versus when he is the former partner. Yeah. And like that's the, the dynamic, the change. It's nice. Mm-hmm. The Excellent. Job. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's good to see that kind of, a, you know, the, when you've got good writing as well. Uh, yeah. As well as yeah. it's a good acting and good writing together. It's, it's, it makes it's, a... Without the writing, we can't do anything. <laughs> you just be stood there speechless. This is ridiculous. <laughs> Making silly faces, yeah. doing silly walks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ministry of silly walks. 
<laughs> I wonder if that's because they may not have written the scenes for them. So they just, oh, sod it, we'll just do it. <laughs> right. Clever thinking. <laughs> yep. Excellent. Stella, who is the Lethal Weapon Italia page on Twitter. Hi, Stella. The, she says the fans obviously act, actively campaigning for a season two, which is topical after you just mentioned it, of the, from the show. And she's the one who started the online petition and with many more Thank to you. come. What kind of arc and personal growth would you like to see for your character in the seasons to, seasons to come? Because um, obviously we want more than just a season two. <coughs> um, well, I, I know that Avery has ambitions. Mm -hmm. He's not content just being the police captain. So I would like to see, uh, personally, I'd like to see how his uh, home life affects his work life a little bit. I'd mm -hmm. like to see him get out a little bit more and be a little more involved. Yeah. Um, and I would love to see how his ambitions um, uh, affect his ability to control the guys. Mm -hmm. You know, and like the decision between his upward mobility and career versus taking care of them. Because I feel like in the in, it, it's been touched on a little bit uh, in season one, but um, uh, that that can become a touchy subject. Yeah. You know, and I feel like so far his uh, his loyalties have lied with protecting his guys. Mm -hmm. And I feel like that's the kind of guy that's the kind of captain he is. But I'd like to see the um, the 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 problems that could arise as if when those things come in conflict. Yeah. No, that'd be pretty good. That's kind of say even from early on. That's something I've picked up is that, is that Avery is, is very very protective of his guys. Even Riggs, who's just come in. And he's just yeah. the complete tear away, drunken, um, dope smoke. All that marijuana scene was hilarious in episode two, I think it was. Yeah. <laughs> that was just awesome. Was it Damon came out? Goes, no, please don't smoke that around me because I've got to take a drug test. Walks out and there's Riggs. Whoa, man! <laughs> yeah, that was that was it's brilliant. So <laughs> but yeah, so that you know, obviously you know, then Avery is very protective, and that does come across. And so even from the early episodes I've seen, that's definitely something I. I I think, obviously, as you said, it's going to get deeper to see. Um, right. But it'd be, uh, it'd be awesome to see those conflicts come in from higher up later on and the consequences right. of the actions that you've taken as Avery. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and the consequences of protecting them. Oh, well, yeah, exactly, them. yeah. Yeah, right? Yeah. Because it has knock-on effects, you know. It's, it's what's yeah. the butterfly effect. One little protection here. What's going to happen back? Uh, yeah. Yep. You hear about and it. And there, the there is... Uh, where, what episode are you guys on? What, what, how many have aired there? I'm on four at the moment. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so I think you, when you get to, I think they aired it as eleven or thirteen. It's one of mm -hmm. the two. There's there is a, a, a the big Avery episode of the season where you see a little bit of, of his history coming back to bite him. All right. Excellent. Uh, so that's and I, I it was um, a just a lot of fun to shoot um, and be interesting to see yeah. how he makes those choices. Cool. Excellent. Can't wait to see that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, carrying on with Stella as well, obviously she says you're very active on social media, so she'd love to hear about your relationship with the fans and if you've ever found yourself in our position, as in being huge fans of another actor or musician, etc., and getting the chance to meet him or her. Um, the the one that stands out, ironically, because we were talking about this, uh, mm -hmm. I think before we started recording, was Tom Hanks. Oh right. Yeah. I, I, uh, when they were doing the auditions for Band of Brothers. Yeah, they read every guy in Los Angeles that was eighteen to twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Right, every guy in LA went in to meet. Yeah, and uh, so I I met with the casting director and I had a meeting with Tom Hanks. Wow. And um, uh, I was still new and green and mm. uh, nervous, and <clears throat> that was a weird audition process because they weren't really giving you a lot. They mm -hmm. were like just they just wanted to meet you. Yeah, and see who you were to see if you fit in because mm -hmm. you know. Because there was going to be so much, they didn't have a lot of time to, especially all those smaller characters. They didn't have a lot of time to give them a lot of direction, so they wanted to kind of find the right guys and just let them be there with yeah. each other. Um, but that was uncomfortable for me as an actor who came from theater, where uh, I wasn't trying to be myself. I was always trying to be a character. Mm -hmm. um, I wasn't ready for that type of meeting yet. Yeah. So I was a little uh, flustered, and I, I go to the meeting, and um, I'm just sitting in this room. Waiting. They were told me, okay, go in here and Mr. Hanks will be in in a minute. So I'm just <laughs> sitting in this room and Tom Hanks walks in, like just breezes in, like like almost Kramer-ish, like opens the door. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, Kevy, Kev, Kev. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, I said, Tommy, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it went down from there. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't my best meeting. Ah. But I was, I was a little, uh, that was one of the few times I've been starstruck because mm. he's such a, he's such a, 
such an amazing actor mm -hmm. and he's such a strong big personality that um and especially as a young green actor who really needed a script to play off of as opposed to walking in and being myself at the time yeah uh, I, I was i was really genuinely thrown and i was <laughs> I, I, I did obviously did not work on that show. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, that's a shame. It's a, it's a cracking show. Um, but that's an awesome story to meet someone like Tom yeah. Hanks. You know, it's just, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, he's again. He's, he's... So recently. Um, I got to meet Joe Pesci. All right. And that. Um, and like have conversations with him. And that yeah. was. That was. Uh, I was. I was at this place, and um, I'm sitting by myself, and mm -hmm. he came and sat down, and it was just the two of us in this room. And I had, had dinner plans with someone. Yeah. And he started talking to me about Mad Men. <laughs> and I just, under the table, texted my friend and said, I'm not going to make it. I'll call you later. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm not leaving this room. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm not getting up until he does. Like, yeah. I'm gonna, this is a, a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. I'm going to take advantage. Oh. Yeah, well, I don't think your friend would have ever blamed you. <laughs> no, no. I, w I did not get in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> that is, that's a, another pretty awesome story. I mean, you know, they're two... Amazing, amazing actors. I think Tom Hanks is in my top five of uh, all-time yeah. favorites. You know, I mean, to me, he's probably got that sort of. You look back at the. Um, I can't think of any now. You know, <laughs> you know the the classic actors, and he's. I mean, I've followed him my entire life as well. So he's watching him in Big, and then Band of yeah. Brothers really turned the corner with seriousness. I've actually got a Shane. I've met Shane Taylor, who played Doc Rowe. Oh wow! From Band of Brothers, but last year I think it was. Um, I chatted with him. He's a he's a lovely chap as well. But there, there's such a humility about p the, that show itself and being on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they've just been to Bastogne as well. They did a 60th, 70th anniversary of Bastogne last December. Yeah. Um, I was supposed to go over there, but a uh, few little job issues at the time <laughs> meant that yeah. couldn't afford to get over there. But that looked like, you know, they still meet all this time after filming. They yeah. still get together, yeah. which is pretty, pretty cool. <laughs> well, they, they, they had they had a, a quite an amazing experience on that show. I mean, they, yeah. those guys were thrown into like a mini boot camp and then they spent months and months and months, you know, just there together with exactly. lots of them. Yeah, that's what I loved about because when they had that episode replacements as well, the guys who were the replacements, they yeah. didn't do the boat. They um, deliberately didn't do the boot camp they made them not do the boot camp with everybody else so that when they right. came in as replacements they could actually have that resentment the real true resentment because everyone else is like well who the hell are you you didn't come you know yeah you didn't train you, you didn't go through what we went through yeah, yeah. exactly so you know that, that's a realism effect of ah oh, you know yeah don't get rid of that definitely definitely cool moving on to your questions about you again <laughs> is gabby nunez i think that's her twitter name as well is how do you begin to develop a character <clears throat> well, hi Gabby. It um it for me it's always the script. I mean, coming from the theater, uh, having been trained there, that was where I started. It's the 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 writer is the god. The writer mm -hmm. is you know the boss, and so um it's always my my thing is always what is the I always read the script multiple times, and the first one I want to hear the story, and then I read from my character's point of view, and then I read it to everyone else's point of view of the character. Yeah, and take all. I take as much of that information as I can, and that's how it starts. Mm -hmm. And then for me, um, so it all comes from the script. You know, it's all there. Um, and then I try to make it as personal as I can to me, mm -hmm. and then bring some kind of humanity to it. That's that's my basic. Okay, mm -hmm. fair enough. It's a good way. Nice way to do <laughs> it. <laughs> so far. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> You know, you're starring on a hit TV show, so it's got to work. So. <laughs> <laughs> it worked on this one. Yeah. <laughs> She's also asking, this is a um, an, kind of an off the wall -y one, the octopus that you ate in CSI New York. Yes. Was that false or was it another person who actually ate it? Um, they, uh, so they had, uh, have you seen that episode? I think I have, probably a while ago. Cause it, was, you know, it, was, it was CSI New York and I played a, a sushi chef, a sous mm -hmm. chef, a sushi restaurant. And um, I killed a girl by force feeding her a live octopus. Yeah. Because um, and it's, it's evidently that's a thing. You have these mini tiny little octo octopi. I don't know if that's right. Um, and you you but you get you capture them alive mm -hmm. and you wrap them in a certain way on a chopstick that allows you to swallow them. But if you don't wrap them correctly, the when they get to the back of your throat, they open up right. and they suffocate. Right. Yep. So which to me is. I don't. Doesn't sound interesting at all to me to try that. <laughs> no, it's like um, blowfish as I well. Don't, you know? I don't have that kind of death wish. Um, 
so uh, I don't I don't remember if I ate one, but I know I had to put one in uh, my scene partner's mouth. Mm-hmm. And they had real live ones, they had real dead ones, and then they had ones that were fake. Yeah. And uh, they smelled so bad. <laughs> and <laughs> it was so horrible. And they would wrap – I would pull a live one out of the tank yeah. and, you know, one shot. And then they had me uh, fake wrap a fake one and they had one pre-wrapped. And so mm-hmm. it was a mixture of all of them. But I never put any of the real ones in my own mouth. Right. <laughs> and and – and I don't think they were paying me enough to do that. Yeah, I, th- I think that's a bit of a risk you wouldn't really want to be taking. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, the, the hazard pay didn't, yeah, there was yeah. no hazard pay. <laughs> there's realism and then there's extra realism. <laughs> and then there's, we don't need that. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. I didn't realize, yeah, I suppose it, oh. why, yeah. Why, why do people, do, it's like there's, puff, is it a puffer fish as well? Yes. With the yeah, venom the, from a puffer fish. Yeah, that, where if you don't cut it correctly, the, it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll poison you. Like, how is that? I mean, it has to taste amazing. Yeah. Because just the risk of dying is not worth it to me to taste that. I don't. No, no, not at all. But then. Right. Yeah, I was just. No, it doesn't even fathom or pass my brain. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, okay, moving on. Um, last couple of people is Tonya, who is Lethal Weapon HQ, who's very active and has helped me a lot with uh, <laughs> tweeting out, etc. And yeah. I think she's very talkative with you guys on Twitter too. Yes. She says, can you share the story about you being a male cheerleader? She thinks it was when you were in high school. It, it's true. <laughs> so when I was in high school, I was uh, very short my freshman year. Mm-hmm. And I went to an all-boys Catholic school, and I was ineligible uh, to play uh, sports the first year. I could be on the team, but I couldn't play in the games. Yeah. And so I was on the football team for like two weeks. And then I realized, I maybe have been a week for practice getting my butt handed to me every day because <laughs> I was five foot two. Mm. Uh, and uh, and they told me I couldn't play, and I was like, "Well, I'm not going to get my ass kicked for for the whole season to not yeah. play." So I quit the team. Um, and then my junior year, a buddy of mine, the year before our cheerleader, we had the only co-ed team mm-hmm. in the city, and uh, they had won nationals the year before. Yeah. And so they were kind of a big deal. And then a buddy of mine said, "Hey, I'm going to try out for the cheerleaders. You should do it with me." Mm. And I thought, okay, so I can either go do two a days during the summer, or I can go to cheerleading camp with eight hundred girls and ten guys. <laughs> hmm. uh, and then my practice is with the pretty cheerleaders, and then every other cheerleader in the city is going to want to do stunts with us. Mm-hmm. Which one <laughs> am I going to pick? And so I became a cheerleader. Fair enough. I was going to say that's a that's a pretty hard and choice. I was, <laughs> and, uh, so it's funny. My my cheerleading partner uh, that year, her name yeah. is. Uh, her name was Leah Hudson. That's now Le- Leah Tita, mm-hmm. and uh, her husband and her husband's military, and they live in Hawaii. Yeah. And I went, and my wife and daughter and I went to Hawaii to, and and stayed next to them for a week this All last right. summer. Oh, and, lovely! Uh, got to, I got to, and we and we she she and I still to this day joke. We were definitely the weak links. Yeah, like we had people who could do crazy stunts and flips, and they would hold the girls with one hand over their head. Mm-hmm. Leah and I could barely do back handsprings. Like we were <laughs> definitely. They would put us in the corner. Right, yeah. Know, we're not the strong cheerleaders on that team. And uh, I'm at their house, and they have a trampoline in Hawaii. And uh, as a joke, I tried to do what is called a double nine. Mm-hmm. And it's when you pretty much make your arm makes a nine and your legs make a nine in the air, you know. Right. Okay. And I, I jump on the trampoline and tried to do it, and knee hit the elbow, and I almost <laughs> went off the trampoline and broke. And I was like, okay, no, no, no more. I'm not even going to try a joke to do this. <laughs> As a forty-something-year-old, this is not a good idea, and I didn't even stretch. I was like, I can do that. I can still do that. No, I yeah, yeah. I could barely do it then. I can't do it. Well, it's funny, man. I mean, I I took up wrestling thirty at the age of thirty-eight, pro wrestling. Oh, really? Yeah. So I'm, I'm and uh, I did it for two years. Like mask, like pro wrestling mask and tights, or like yeah, with the tights. I had white and blue zebra pattern tights. My character was Camp, the fabulous Flash. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I only did really. To be fair, I only did training, and I could did a couple of one, two matches in a rookie show, tag team singles. Yeah, and it, it was great. Um, but I went out the same way. I was like, it was hurting because obviously slamming. You've got to be athletic. I mean, all these people who say yeah, it's fake. Yeah, yeah, those guys do it. I mean, train. Look, look <laughs> the Rock. I mean, that, that, oh, he's God, a yeah. big man. Exactly. You know, so all those people who do say it's fake, go and do it for four hours on a Saturday afternoon. You'll find it's, <laughs> it hurts. Um, but yes. I, I ended up the similar. I sort of fell out the ring. You know when they one person ducks, yep. the other person jumps. I yep. ducked. I got up, tripped, went through the ropes, 
head first. I managed to put my hands out, but my leg caught the brunt of the ply th big thick plywood under the under the ring, and then the metal. And I, I've, I've actually got a permanent <coughs> dent. This is two years on now, and I've still got a dent in my leg and a bruise because I lost the quad muscle just retracted and I lost the use of it. And so it was a time when I thought, you know what, you're nearing 40. This is not really the thing you want to be doing. <laughs> yeah, especially if you haven't been doing it. Exactly. You know, you have, no. Oh, good. I mean, I'm glad you were smart enough to walk away. Yeah, I mean, there's a guy who broke his neck in the ring, but he'd been 15 years, he broke his neck in the ring, and then he, a year later he's back in there again. But I was thinking, well, you, you know, he's trained for 15 years. I've done it for two to lose weight. and <laughs> Yeah. I had a golf ball in my neck once because that V muscle I caught on caught a tear in there and the blood went in earth so it had a golf ball oh. size and went, it was horrible that was about a week into it <laughs> and you well i'm glad you pressed through after that but i think i think you did the right thing by hanging up hanging up your boots yeah i think it was probably wisest for everyone's sake you know <laughs> i love my yeah. family so <laughs> good smart man yeah smart man <laughs> don't want to be ended up um, <laughs> some severe zany wrestling accident but no it's, right? it's like yeah that trampoline thing just brought that back to me then <laughs> Jonathan, by the way, Jonathan was a real cheerleader. Well, he did right. it. He did it in college at Penn State. Oh God! And he was the real. I mean, he was the real deal. So yep. talk to him about that when you talk to him. He was. I was a a high school, mm -hmm. you know, cheerleader. He was the real deal in college. Oh God! I'll have to ask him about that then. <laughs> definitely, <Yeah>. definitely. <laughs> Excellent. And moving on to the last two questions again. They're from this is from the people who sent them in. It's Clayne Crawford Italy, which is their Twitter account. Yep. Um. What's the best? What's the best concert you've been to? Oh, um, well, I think the best one I went to was. Ooh, that's tough. Um, the two that stand out. The first concert I ever saw. I was really. I don't even know how old I was. I was young. I was like twelve or fourteen. I saw uh, Kansas open for Heart, mm -hmm. and that was like that was a. Uh, that was an amazing experience because my first live concert and it was so loud. And, yeah. Um, I, that was that was a powerful one. I think um, one of my favorites. I saw Beck play oh, right, cool. country music at mm -hmm. the Wiltern. That was unexpected. I didn't really know Beck at the time. Yeah. It was. It was. I knew his like popular stuff, but mm -hmm. I didn't know how much of a musician he was outside of that. Um, that was for an amazing concert. And then I saw um, I saw you two three times. Oh, nice. And those, each one of those. That's my, that, that was my high school anthem. You know, you rattle yeah. and hum and Joshua Tree were the things that I grew up. And my brother, who's eight years younger than me, even more so because he was eight years old when I was yeah. listening to him. Um, so that was implanted on him as well. But those are, uh, those are three of my favorites. Awesome. Those three. Are you going to go and see him this year, is it? They're doing the Joshua, they're doing the Joshua I'm, Tree. Yeah, I want to I'm trying to figure out whether it's better to, to see him in San Francisco near mm -hmm. where I live or to see him here in L.A. Awesome. I definitely yeah. want to see that. that yeah, that would be a pretty cool tour. I think the only concert I never went to, because um, I've never been to one, a uh, proper one. You've never been to one? No, I bought tickets. Me and my wife bought tickets back for Michael Jackson at the O2 in London. And we had oh, wow. we actually had tickets for that. And then obviously events took their turn and sadly passed away. And it was I had a chance to go and see Meatloaf after that. But we thought, you know what? We're not going to risk it because if we buy tickets, something's going to happen to him. <laughs> It'll be your fault. Exactly. It'll be your fault. <laughs> Which is exactly what we thought. So gonna, <laughs> the, you know. the next the next musician we lose, I'm going to call you and see if you had tickets. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> we thought, you know, Meatloaf's getting on a bit now. So. <laughs> Let's not risk it. Go see Young Act. Go see Young Act. Yeah, yeah. We'll have to. We'll have to go out there and see. <laughs> Yeah. Excellent, excellent, and that's all from the um, from the listeners themselves. Are we can now from myself, obviously with Lethal Weapon, uh, episode thirteen, I think, has just aired in the states, hasn't it? Is it thirteen yes. or fourteen? So, yeah, what kind of things could we expect from Avery Brooks in the rest of the season that um, we haven't already touched on? Right. Uh, there, there's nothing. There's nothing jarring that happens between then. It's, it's hard because now between. I just we're finishing shooting 17 right now. And we're about to start shooting 18 mm -hmm. because we don't stop shooting. Yeah, like, they all mix to working. one. They all kind of they're all in my head. I can't remember which ones which without looking it up. But um, like I said, the big Avery episode was like 11 or 13, and that was the one where we see some of his past catching up with him. Some yeah, decisions he made when he was partners with Murtaugh, mm -hmm. um, and how he handles that. Um, uh, the through the rest. Oh, Getz shows up. I think next week in the states. All right. You know, the, Leo Getz, yeah, who's um, amazing, so talented, so funny. Um, uh, so that's exciting. Um, but that's those are the, for Avery. That there's nothing that's like 
oh my gosh, you you can't you're going to be amazed when you see this. Like it's yeah. more of along the lines of handle how to handle them. Yeah. Uh, uh, but I I read the fin- the finale is exciting the the, uh, the season finale is exciting I just read that the other day and it's so it's ex- I I don't want to give away too much <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair stuff enough. you know before that so right uh, but it, I, it's I'm I'm excited I'm you know again touch wood on my head that um I'm excited to find out if we get to do another season because I'm mm-hmm. I'm looking forward to especially after having read eighteen yeah looking for where the writers take it again next year and take those relationships and their storylines. Brilliant, excellent. And in parting, is there before I stop recording? Is there anything you'd like to say to the fans themselves? Bef- oh well, for, real quick, uh, I, 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 Thomas Lennon is the guy who plays Leo Getz. Oh, all right, okay, cool. Amazing, and it's, it's very different than the Mr. Pesci version of Leo Getz, but mm-hmm. it is the character of Leo Getz, and so he's he is. <laughs> there was a, there's a great scene where it's him and I and uh, um, Damon in a room in my yeah. office, and uh, the first take. Uh, I think they were the coverage was on on us, and uh, Thomas Lennon is doing his gets, and I had this big, goofy smile on my face <laughs> the whole time because he was cracking me up, and mm-hmm. I was enjoying his performance so much. Yeah, I'm just I'm sitting there like like a, like a, like an idiot with a big <laughs> cheesy grin on my face, mm-hmm. and the director had to come over to me and go, "Okay, so you're mad at gets right now, right?" <laughs> I went, "I know, I know," but he was being so funny, I just wanted to give him some props. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so look forward to that. Yeah. Uh, to the fans, I just say thank you. I mean, you know, uh, if people don't watch the show, they don't let us keep doing it. Mm-hmm. So, um, <laughs> so it, it's look. I I love what I do. I love being able to do what I do, and I would I would do it if if no one watched because I enjoy doing it. Yeah. But um, the fact that people engage and are interested. And interested in us on the outside of the show, and interested in our characters, and then it, especially in the world we live in now, to give them like even if it's just forty-five minutes a week of like just a little bit of escape and mm-hmm. a little bit of moment to you know recharge their batteries, that's a, a, a beautiful bonus from from my point of view. Yeah. And so to the fans, I just say thank you. I say thanks for watching, thanks for engaging us on uh, social media, and thanks for engaging Fox and Warner Brothers on social media. You know, requesting more of them. And I, and I hope we get to have this relationship for many years. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, thanks, Kevin. That was absolutely fantastic. Really hope everybody enjoyed listening to that or watching that. And yeah, thank you for all the questions that were sent in. Really appreciate it. Please support the show. Um, you need to get a season two of this show, definitely. So please, Tonya's doing a great job out there and all the other guys in getting the... Uh, the petition out there so please 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 push it push it push it and get a season two keep supporting the show and i hope you've all enjoyed listening i hope you enjoyed the answers that you were given to your questions and yeah well this has been chris gordon on hellblazer biz with kevin ram of lethal weapon <laughs>